Hello, everyone. Welcome to the second episode of the construction of Cityville. This picks up exactly where the first episode left off, or it will when everything finishes loading. Okay, as mentioned last time, uh, this time around, I'm going to build another neighborhood down in the, I guess that would be the southeast quadrant of the city tile. Now, to do that, first I'm going to need an interchange off the main highway further over to the east here. So the first step is to decide what I'm going to build. Now it seems sensible to go with a straightforward interchange initially, so I'm going to build a simple diamond interchange. Uh, also just like the previous one, I'm going to build it with a road. Uh, now um, here we go. Again, the uh, use the level one viaducts, and here we go. Here's a transition. There's one side and the other, and we link them up. There we go, and there's the bridge. It's just that easy. And it looks like we're going to, unsurprisingly, run into the farmland while building the interchange. Uh, that's not unusual. So what I'll do is remove a little bit of the street here. And I'll extend the road. And link it up. Since there's no reason not to, and also on this side, I'll extend the road out some distance. And now it's time to build the ramps. And just like on the other one, I'll extend the ramps three tiles on either side of the road. and then angle it in. This time I will add the acceleration and deceleration lanes since this is a substantial road. Uh, now, I can't recall if there are appropriate pieces in the flex ramps. Okay. the wrong one. There we go. I think that's the right one. Let's try it. It's an E one. Whoops. Ah. 
That looks like the right one. Now let's see. But it seems to be doing something strange here. I can probably fix that with a starter. Okay, there we go. That side's correct. Now we need a transition. Okay, with transition. We need 8s to 10s. And. Oops. That's the one we want. And we'll need a similar one on this side. There we go. And again with the ramps. Okay, an E1 ramp again. There we go. Now we'll link up the ramp again. Interesting. Okay, I'm going to need a starter on the end of those. Okay, so it's going to be 8S here. Really? Now it might be possible to fix that by dragging, but I'll put a starter in anyway. And let's see. Link it up there. Link it up there. And apparently that is just hosed. Okay, we'll try this again. This time, try it without an existing highway. This is the thing with the RHW stuff. Uh, stuff that ought to work often doesn't. Uh, at least not the way you expect it to. There we go, we'll build the ramp. And link up the highway there. No, nope, it's doing the wrong thing again. Apparently, there's a bug with the flex ramps. Okay, that's, uh, that's solvable. Uh, we'll just have to use the non-flex ramp in there. Okay, so we'll go with the regular ramps. NS exit and we link it up and there we go now it behaves correctly okay so that's how we have to do it so I'll take this one out and do the same there ramps Okay, and put it in place, and then we link it up again. There we go. And there we have an acceleration deceleration lane set up. Now we'll go ahead and do the same thing over here. Now theoretically I can put this in on top of the existing road. We'll see if it works. Okay. Theoretically. Oh, I did something funny with the land there. At least it wasn't the hole to China. Now, let's see. Is that 
that fixes up. Okay. That fixes up. Okay. Wonder what's up with this. Now that makes it look a little less stupid, but it's not ideal. Okay, if I do this... <sighs> okay... Let's, let's flatten it out first. Okay, now build it again. Ramps. went the wrong way around the tab ring there. Okay, now we'll link it up again. There we go. Now we have a proper interchange here. Now, one last detail. Uh, width transitions. How far back is it here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, need the right one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. way here and what okay that's wrong okay okay now we have a proper looking uh, interchange there uh, I'll smooth out the curves uh, curves. And there. And there. And there. Okay. So. Now, obviously, it would look a little more uh, like a real intersection or interchange if the ramp just went it went uphill and this was an earthen embankment. Um, however, that's also a lot more uh, fiddly work to make happen, uh, which is why I haven't done it here. And besides, it's uh, not really that unusual to have a wide uh, uh, interchange. It also allows the curves to be a little bit nicer as well. It gives plenty of room for that smooth curve to fit in there. So we'd have to be back about this far anyway, so might as well just go the extra few tiles there, spread it out a bit. Now, we have an access road for the new development, so it's time to actually build it. Now this one I'll build a little bit further down toward the edge here. And this one will have a slightly different road layout. This time I'm going to use a slightly less orthogonal layout. Uh, and you'll see here in a moment we can make diagonal streets uh, simply by dragging them. Uh, this is a feature of the NAM. Uh, 
um, as you can see, it's a little bit tedious. There are some helper pieces that can be plopped, but this is just as fast, really. Um, and I'll still have the same gap between as on the other one. Uh, while I'm thinking about it, I should bring the uh, power in uh, from the north here. Okay, we have the power in. Um, so just to, because I can never remember quite how this lines up, uh, I'll put some zoning in here. And, okay, so this is where it needs to go. And this is what I was talking about last time about it being tedious to set up uh, diagonal zoning. Um, is it says you have to plop these zones in individually like that okay uh, now the parallel street Okay, now I'll f fill in the uh, other holes here. And we'll have one come off diagonally here. So as you can see, it is possible to break the grid, but you end up with some interesting results. Okay. It's actually fairly tedious to make a uh, grid like this. Oops, that's one too far. One, two, three, four. Okay, there we go. Okay. Of course, building things diagonally like this doesn't help with things like schools, uh, which can only be placed orthogonally, um, since there's only four rotations. Um, it occurs to me that I really should bring water in. And there's no point building a second water system. So I'll just bring a pipe up to the other town site. It's not so unusual to have water systems shared between towns in 
in the real world too. Uh, okay, there we go. As it happens, this will bring water to a couple of farms as well. Um, okay, so there's water down here now. give these guys some commercial services here as well. Okay. In the middle here, I'm going to put a little bit of a park area, which I'm just going to use an open grassland here. Now the open grassland does help have a bit of a park effect. It makes the area a little more desirable. Uh, it also is useful for filling in bits like this, which really, they're too far from a road to be useful for anything. And if you don't want to really fiddle around. Now, I think there's a roundabout that can be constructed with this. Yes. Okay, good. Okay. Those uh, roundabouts are a feature of the NAM as well. They're uh, quite useful for. Uh, uh, unusual intersections. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, this six tile gap is actually good for some larger lots. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I'm gonna go six up there. And fill in here. And fill in here. Okay. As it happens, it's actually easier to build these little uh, off-kilter uh, areas like this using roads rather than um, streets. 
Uh, mostly because the roads will bend more easily. And since it seems like a good idea, I'll just bring this road down to the border and make a neighbor connection there. The thing about neighbor connections is each one of them raises the demand cap on uh, various things, particularly commercial, uh, and I believe industrial. That's important if you want your city to grow. This looks like another spot that would be a good candidate for a roundabout. There we go, that looks better. Now ordinarily in the real world I'm not a big fan of roundabouts, especially multi-lane ones since nobody really seems to know what they're doing when they drive around one. Uh, but the single lane ones are actually quite good in uh, low volume areas. Uh, much nicer than the four-way stop. Uh, especially once you recognize the, the rule, at least in this part of the world, is if you come up to the roundabout and there is any traffic at all circulating in the, in the circular carriageway, you're not allowed to enter the roundabout. You must wait for that traffic to exit. Most of the residential ones are small enough that you really can't put two cars in there anyway. But it's useful uh, to know like for the smaller ones that uh, uh, you just make sure that you don't enter it if there's other cars going around there and you won't have an accident. That said, uh, the larger ones, there's plenty of room for two or three cars circulating uh, if you enter it safely. You know, with a single lane, you're you don't have any of the conflicting movements with the uh, cars entering and exiting. So that's not uh, a significant problem. Uh, the multi-lane ones, it's a little more problematic. Um, basically, um, as I understand it, if you're in the outside lane, you must exit at the first exit if it's a two-lane one. And But the, uh, the inside lane can go as far around as it wants. Again, you're not supposed to enter the roundabout if there's any traffic already circulating. But with a multi-lane one, multiple cars can enter at the same time from a particular entrance. So I guess the rule does make some sense there. That said, I don't think that's the specific rule in my area. I haven't looked it up recently, so I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but the last time I checked, uh, it the rules basically said that in the roundabout anybody could exit from anywhere at any time which uh, is kind of well frightening really um, it also uh, implied that the outside lane can in fact go we go more than one exit around now it wouldn't make sense to allow the outside lane to, you know, not to allow the outside lane to continue going around if it actually continues past the exit. It doesn't make any sense uh, if you are required to exit immediately. Okay, 
So there's our little suburb section here. Um, it'll happily exist like that without further uh, interference. However, it does need some city services. We'll start with a fire station, which we'll put up here. And we'll also give them some education. We don't need a large school here. Um, if we put it here, it should cover the uh, area. And if we give them a high school as well, we can put that over here as well. Now, these guys also are out of reach of the hospital, but I'm going to be chintzy. I'm not going to give them a hospital over here. Okay, that's our uh, new little suburb thing over here in the southeast. This really does need some reworking, but I'm not uh, prepared to do that just now. Um, realistically, I'm probably going to extend the road through through now this is the highway coming from the north and this is a highway going this way and it, we really do want to maintain free flow uh, on these four movements now doing that pretty much means that we need to maintain free flow on any other movements we add as well uh, just for uh, general functionality. However, it's not strictly necessary to do that. It could be reconfigured so that uh, the main uh, movements here uh, don't have a uh, conflict with the other traffic. But I do, uh, on this one, I do want to avoid uh, weave zones. Uh, so like here, you got you got one exit, one entrance, one exit, one entrance. There's no weave zones. And I really want to maintain that when I modify this interchange. I think I'll end up doing that by building a clover leaf with collector ramps, which would mean there'd be four carriageways coming under and four carriageways over the top. However, immediately after this, this road is going to down convert to uh, probably an avenue of some kind. Uh, it'll down convert to a local street. Now let's see how this part is doing up here. Well, this seems to be doing fairly well here. Uh, the uh, general um, population here seems to be fairly happy. Um, I don't see any any amount of dilapidation here. Uh, so, well, that's that happens when uh, property intended for one uh, wealth level gets occupied by a lower wealth level. And if you ever wondered the dilapidation, it's not that it's abandoned, but it's being occupied by somebody with lower wealth. Okay. So far, so good. Now we're up to about 4,500 sims overall in the city. Uh, it's still a fairly low population, but we have a really good surplus going here, which means we have plenty of, uh, of um, resources to improve the uh, overall city and to expand uh, services and so on. Okay.
Okay, now uh, I'm going to uh, add some additional uh, uh, residential in this area. I'm going to use the uh, narrow block uh, configuration here. Okay, so make sure these guys have water. Okay, so I split the road there in a less than ideal manner for this water system. Uh, nevertheless, water pipes are not that expensive, so it's not that big of a problem. Now, you know, this is not going to be as desirable here due to the pollution from the uh, power plants here. But what I can do, I can, I can relocate the power plants over to the industrial area over here. We're already generating lots of pollution here, so there's no reason to uh, keep to split the pollution center. Okay, there's a coal power plant, put one there. Oh, look at that, we can get two of them there. Now, this is uh, interesting to watch. Take a look at the uh, air pollution graph here. Now, if I eliminate these, you can see the pollution disappears fairly quickly. And look at that, as soon as the pollution goes away, the uh, lots start growing. There we go, it's basically cleaned up now. Okay, time to fill this in. Now, because this is fairly flat, there's not a lot of, uh, it, you know, there isn't really all that much um, pressure to set up a uh, non-grid layout. Um, there just isn't, there aren't just, just aren't any obstructions that force it on you. Let's speed this up a bit. Okay. There we go.
Okay, let's put that back down to a sane speed. Okay, so we now get a mayor statue. The Sims seem to like the statue, so you might as well build it. It's not a large ongoing cost. We have plenty of room in the budget, so we'll, we'll put one in. We're up over 5,000 citizens now. Now let's see what the demand looks like. Still high. Uh, no, the high tech uh, industrial is in demand. Problem is, to z the zoning to allow for high tech industrial uh, is the high density uh, industrial uh, zone. Uh, that unfortunately also allows dirty industry and manufacturing industries which generate a fair bit of pollution and unfortunately it's very difficult to have the high the high uh, density zoning without the polluting industries growing in it now the high tech industries they do generate some pollution but not that much and it's not generally enough to put off the sims from living nearby uh, and it, it, so it, it's actually quite desirable to have in the city uh, but it's fairly difficult to get it to grow without the pollution stuff there is a way to do it that's fairly bulletproof it involves the tax rates by taxing the dirty industry at the maximum and taxing the manufacturing industries at the maximum new ones pretty much won't grow now the really cool thing about changing these tax rates is the existing industries that are over here they won't move out they'll continue operating for the most part and you notice that it's quite a boost to tax revenue That said, I'm going to put in some uh, zoning for the uh, high-tech industry. I'm going to put it... I'm leaving a side space here for a sort of um, main road here. And I'll put the uh, industrial zoning on this side of it. Now, uh, I'm still trying to decide whether I'm going to make this a six-lane avenue from the network widening mod or just go with a regular avenue type road here for the ultimate configuration. Uh, it, I'm, I'm not sure which is going to ultimately be better. Uh, I think it'll fit better with ultimately having an avenue here. But for now, I'm just going to have a road. And we'll bring the road all the way down to there. And I'll bring it all the way up to here. And I'll make a connector back here. Now, on this side is where I'm going to put the new industrial zoning. I'm going to leave a little bit of space here for a sound barrier and a little bit of a gap for maybe a road. Uh, so it's uh, leave two. Uh, yeah, we'll leave two tiles there. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, that's about right. Okay, so there's 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Ah, that fits perfectly. Okay, so I'll use a street on this side. Don't, I'm going to have to fix that, obviously. Uh, okay. Okay, the fix here is the same as it was on the other side. Uh, now I need to make sure that I have proper water to the area. And I'm 
going to need one here too by the look of it. Okay. Now, as you can see, we got high tech industrial coming up. Now, you need uh, well educated sims, you also need fire protection and water. Uh, police protection or low crime is uh, also uh, important here. Um, but uh, as you can see, it's coming in quite happily. Now you can see the demand for the dirty and manufacturing industries has dropped off substantially. Oh, that's a cute headline. Teachers outraged at students passing notes written on foundation garments. Can't imagine how practical that would be. Perhaps that's why the teachers are outraged. Now, in this area here, remember this is reserved for a road. I think I'm going to leave a green space here, like a greenway, uh, into in which we can later put, you know, you know, city services or whatever, but mostly a green space. Now, in between there, let's see what we have in here. We have a park, and we have the open grass area, and we have gardens. Now, a beach wouldn't make all that much sense. Uh, Okay, so in there, I'm going to go with the uh, open grass areas. I used to have a mod that provided uh, the essentially an open grass area with trees pre-populated on it. That would be actually ideal here, but I apparently have not reinstalled that mod since I uh, reinstalled my uh, wine configuration completely. Now, that um, wine reinstallation was necessary because I'd let the uh, situation get so far out of hand that it was the only way to clean everything up. Oddly enough, it also stabilized SimCity quite a bit when I did that. Okay, so we have our green space. I left a gap here for a road connection. Okay. Oops, I missed a spot. Okay. Now, what we can do, we can actually fill this in with trees. of whatever kind. Now I don't think we want to put redwoods in. They grow quite tall. Eighteen meters, that's uh, yeah, that's not too bad. Let's put some junipers in there. Now here's the thing you can grow trees on these open grass areas.
you know, whatever configuration you want. Trees have the advantage of absorbing some amount of pollution as well. Uh, I've not really been able to figure out any particular, um, you know, advantage to them. Uh, but the the open grass areas and the trees they do have a park effect as well, which makes the surrounding uh, area more desirable. I see some uh, larger buildings are growing in here. Oh, it's medium wealth commercial services. As you can see, this uh, industrial area has filled in. Let's extend it up to here. Make sure it has water. There we go. As you can see, there's still a high demand for the high tech industrial. I think I may, may want another interchange up here somewhere. I haven't decided yet, but I think I might. Certainly we'll need a uh, flyover or something once development starts uh, happening over here. Yeah, here we go. There's the industry growing in. Oh yes, I need to fix that uh, bit here. Okay. Uh, so RHW starters need an MIS starter. That's oh, the wrong way around. There we go. And link up the ramp. And fix the road. There we go. Now that should be happy. I'm not sure what I'm going to do in this space. I'll probably bring uh, some industrial development more more toward the highway here. But I think I'll leave that until I decide if I'm going to put another interchange up here. Then I'll know exactly where the ramps are going to be. Uh, in the, and when I do, I'll probably uh, have a third lane extend up to the exit here and have a long weave area. Now that's mostly cosmetic because the RHW6S is one tile wide, just like the four. And that means the capacity is exactly the same as the uh, RHW4. It's the same deal actually is with the RHW8 and 10 that we have over here. Uh, this section has exactly the same capacity as this section because this is still just two tiles. Uh, 
and this is two tiles. So, and, and road capacities in SimCity 4 are based on the t number of tiles, uh, it's capacity per tile. Uh, rather than per lane or anything like that. It doesn't even have the concept really of lanes. Uh, lanes are created using paths. As we can see, if I put the paths on here, now these crisscross paths here are necessary for the traffic to move between the uh, tiles. Otherwise, it won't swap between the tiles on the road. As it happens, this also uh, increases the capacity sum as well. While I'm at it, no, oh, excuse me. While I'm at it, I'm going to extend this road up and this road over. Hey, the idea behind this is that it's an old country road route that. Uh, connects in with this uh, hamlet, I guess, over here. Now I'm going to do something over here. And there is a fractional angle road shift here. Oh, and look at that. I need to fix this now, too. Okay, so here we go. Uh, a starter. MIS. Oh, and complete it and relink it. There we go. I might as well fix it over here too. Because as soon as I touch the area, it's going to destabilize again. And that's the wrong way. There we go. And link it up. There we go. That shouldn't destabilize again. As I was saying, this is a fractional angle uh, uh, curve set up here. It's, it, it looks nicer than the sharp uh, lane shift there. Uh, you know, this could be construed as a, as a correction line or something like that. Um, it's not unusual to have roads shift like this occasionally. If, if this had been shifted just during the construction of the interchange, there'd be another shift shifting it back over here. So this is clearly the original road alignment when the interchange was made. You know, if you're looking at a historical road location. Anyway, there we go. So now we have three distinct areas. Uh, we have a small settlement over here on the southeast. Uh, we have an industrial area over here on the uh, northwest. And in the northeast over here, we have the main city settlement. I think I'm going to uh, call the part at this, this stage. Uh, the next step is going to be uh, working out how to uh, in increase the uh, population some more um, and maybe uh, start considering uh, public transportation. Uh, it's clearly uh, something that's uh, important uh, for the uh, for any city of, of uh, any size and eventually the roads are going to get congested if, it, if we don't build any. Uh, that does pose some interesting challenges uh, in that uh, we either need to uh, 
demolish existing development to put in uh, bus stations or uh, or uh, uh, subway stations uh, or um, we need to uh, set things up with a uh, you know, with a mod like the road top mass transit mod where you can put it right on top of the roads and unfortunately the RTMT mod the road top mass transit uh, has a few limitations in that uh, if you put the stop right in front of a lot uh, that doesn't back onto another street like at a corner uh, it uh, actually makes the uh, lot inaccessible uh, so some care is required when placing it. Uh, it's pretty obvious when that happens for a residential lot because you get the no job or no no tr no no road zots. Uh, but for commercial, it uh, th the building will just uh, go down to no jobs and there won't be anything obvious and to indicate it. So care is required using something like that, but the advantage is that it doesn't take up uh, any real estate outside the uh, existing roads, which have to be there uh, for the game mechanics. I, I'm not sure which path I'm going to go with here. Um, the uh, existing uh, subway uh, stuff and so on uh, is not particularly crash prone. But the uh, road top mass transit stuff is. Uh, you don't really want to hover something like a uh, one of those. Um, uh, uh, I guess one of those lots over top of another one. It'll almost instantly crash the de desktop if you do. Uh, it's a bug in the game related to transit enabled lots. Uh, transit enabled is where uh, traffic can uh, switch between multiple modes. It allows multiple modes across it. Uh, the regular Maxis stations are not transit enabled, so they don't trigger that particular bug. Uh, unfortunately, there's no, no bug fix from Maxis, and it's unlikely there ever will be. And it's unlikely they'll ever give permission for anybody to uh, reverse engineer the executable and fix bugs like that in it. And it's unfortunate as well uh, that that's the case. But uh, I'll have to think about it. I may uh, install the uh, Rotop Mass Transit mod uh, again. Uh, or I may just leave things as they are and use the... Uh, uh, stations that uh, come with uh, the NAM and uh, so on. Now let's take a look in here and see what we have. Okay. Uh, okay, let's see. Okay, there's the standard subway station. Maybe uh, some of these other stations uh, in here would be useful. Here's the sound barriers. Um, oh, uh, I can't remember whose they are now. You know, 
Uh, so the, I, I'm pretty much stuck with the. Uh, with the existing uh, Maxis stations here. Okay, so uh, I'll have to think about that, uh, whether I uh, go ahead and get the row top mass transit in there or if I, uh, if I decide to go with the uh, simple, um, it, you know, basic Maxis stations and maybe the Ninja Boulevard ones. Um, anyway. Uh, and, and next time, I think I'll also uh, construct uh, some heavy rail, uh, which uh, I'm not sure. I'll probably pass it through along somewhere around the uh, the main highway here. Uh, exactly uh, how I'll do that, I'm not sure. I think I'll end up going in a tunnel under the interchange here. Um, and there will be a spur up to the industrial area here. Uh, where um, some of the uh, industrial traffic can then take the rail. Uh, anyway, uh, that's uh, that's all for for this time. Uh, and uh, let's see, well, I should save this and exit. Uh, anyway, that's all for for this time. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, and I hope to see you next time around.